I love traveling and doing my sports in these epic locations outdoors, and I don't want something that's getting in my way mentally. How is your relationship now? And can you have a relationship with a person who shitted on you the way he did on Drink Champs and he owes you $6 million? Can y'all ever have a genuine relationship? Well, he doesn't owe me the money anymore. It got resolved. But Oh, he paid you? Someone paid me. I guess it was him. But Word. Yeah, but I took a little less than I probably... I just wanted to end it instead of going to court for some shit over that. You what know? was the haircut? It was $6 million, so what was the haircut? Hmm? What was the haircut? How much did you end up getting? Uh, let's see. That is none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> but you good though, y'all. He did pay you, basically. Well, yeah, so, so the thing was, I had an issue. And I had an issue because I kept privately being like, yo, I need my money. To his lawyers, to him. Not, to, not really bringing it to him so much because mm -hmm. I know the type of guy he is. He don't be dealing with all of the business aspect of things all the time. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm doing it properly. I'm going through the proper channels, management. They're like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then after years go by, it's not like I was super hurting for it, but at the same time, it's like, first of all, and I don't want to get it misconstrued, like signing to good music was the best thing that could have happened to me in that moment in my life, period. I don't take it for granted. It was a golden opportunity signing to my favorite artist at the time and being a I hate when niggas say period. That shit pisses me off. You deserve to get old. Able to sell 185 million records under good music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was a, a dream come true. And his only profitable artist at that. So it's like, I, I wore that good music and still do. I still fuck with the, the brand and what it did. He's only he's the only profitable artist in good music. I'm saying it was a, a dream come true. And his only profitable artist at that. So it's like, I, w I wore that good music and still do. I still fuck with the, the brand and what it did for me and everything. Like, and I and there's a part of me that will forever fuck with Ye because of that too. For signing me, you know, I'll never discount that. But at the same time, with the deal I signed, he made more money off of me my music to me, which is totally fine. I'm not complaining about that. It's just a fact. Mm -hmm. People be trying to take this so much as a fact. It's just a fucking fact. So when but why would you money, why would you sign a contract where a nigga is gonna make more money off your music than you? You know, I understand opportunity meets perfect timing, but I also understand going into things logically with a level head. You know and I don't know, I just feel like you're kind of fucked for signing that shit in the first place, you know? I don't know, if niggas would have read a contract and that shit said, this is his percentage and this is yours off of your music, I'd have been like, yo, bro, nah. We will have to figure something out or I'm gonna need all my tours and shows and shit taken care of. Like, if you're gonna take money from me, you need to put that into other shit so it doesn't come out of my pocket. I don't know how they did this shit, but all I could tell you is I know Big Sean's run, and I don't know if this, I'm going to be honest, uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if this has to do with his talent, you know, if this has to do with his talent, and that's why um, his career started going downhill, like, only one of the only songs I think of when I hear him is Beware, I will beware, beware, beware of a woman with a broken heart, like, that's one of the only songs I think of when I think of Big Sean, for some reason, like, I can't sit here and tell you, like, you know, so it's just it's just tough. I don't know. It's just tough. It's just tough. I understand. Maybe he knew that the music was hard and that he wasn't the greatest of greatest artists. And this was probably the right move for him to make. And, you know, his career, he's been his name has, you know, sustained and, and he does his thing. I don't know what his music does and his streams do, but yeah, I guess he made the right decision at the right time. So. I'll give it to him, but you can't, you can't, it's a fact, like, you can't be upset about some shit like that, and I think he said I wasn't, Funny. I'm not mad about it, it's a fact, then why would you say it? Off of a deal that you're already getting the lesser part of it, and you're hitting, I'm, I'm hitting up Def Jam, because I'm auditing Def Jam, Jeff Harleston, you know Jeff Harleston, Absolutely. I know, all okay. I'm like, yo, I need my money, bro, like, mm -hmm. where the fuck is my money, because I'm auditing Def Jam, every time I audit Def Jam, there's money sitting there. And then when I really broke it down, and they were like, oh, yo, you sold 185 million records. This I'm like, wait, this don't equate, right? Where's my $6 million? 
six million dollars no one's getting back to me no one's getting back to me so then i drop a record i drop a feature on benny the benny the butcher's album and i say something about it like niggas that's up b's that owe me m's i'm talking about def jam mm -hmm. later on i realized oh no your money got paid a long time ago to cap niggas niggas is yay nigga was the first black billionaire um niggas up b's but owe me M's. Let's not act like Grease a disease, you know? Let's not act like he wasn't talking directly about Ye. Def Jam, my ass. Uh... I say something about it. Like, niggas, that's up B's that owe me M's. I'm talking about Def Jam. Mm -hmm. well, Later shit. on, I realized, oh no, your money got paid a long time ago to good music. Okay, I don't give a fuck. Where's my money? Right. Oh, no, you gotta hit up Ye for that. All right. Oh, shit, okay. Ye, where's my money? Oh, 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 you know, I'm not getting a straight answer from no one. So then I'm like, bro, y'all playing with my money. This is ridiculous, dog. After all of the times where I've sat in the studio, contributed, not got any credit on shit, which is, like I said, I'm not even complaining about that. It is what it is, but the point is, is like, I need my money that's owed to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that was, that's all that was. I ended up settling because I didn't want to deal with it no more. I wanted to move past it because that shit is all the energy, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and after he said what he said, and then I got back up with him after he said what he said on Drink Champs. Oh, so y'all y'all did connect after Drink Champs? Yeah, and I'm just- In person, phone? In person. Okay. Yeah, and he said, you know, he said what he said. I'm not, I'm not into like gossip and stuff, but he said what he said, and it made me realize that I can't really take, I couldn't really take all what he was saying serious yeah. on, on, that, on that Drink Champs. Very performative. Very performative, and that's the, that's how I am, that's like, probably one of the reasons why, like, I feel like that's what I, I'm not, that's what he's good at. And that, I'm not so good at that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. I'm- Person, phone. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> to me it sounds like they linked and the nigga, yay, said the same shit to that nigga's face. Like, yo, bro, literally, look at your numbers, look at this, look at that. The nigga's probably like, yo, you're the worst artist that I ever signed. Like, that was a big mistake. You know what I'm saying? How much money Ye's made from doing Ye shit? And how much money Ye made off of Big Sean? Again, a couple of M's, whoop de whoop de whoop But we talking bill, billionaire, you know? Um, I feel like Ye told him the same shit to his face, you know? Like, yo, look at your shit now. Look at you now. Like, you're not... You know? Say what he said on Dream And Chat. I'm not a hater, but we're, look, we're being realistic. What do you think of when you hear Big Sean? How do you say, yo, you heard that new Big Sean track? Like, the nigga, you know, I'm not like, I'm not a hater. I'm just trying to make sense of the conversation. But again, the way he went about that, talking about I'm not into gossip and all that, which kind of means like, I'm not about to sit here and talk about the conversation we had, but it sounded, he said, after we had that conversation, I can see that it's hard to take what he's saying serious, which means he said the same shit. You just are gonna say, you know what? This nigga's off of being, I'm better than that myself. That's what I'm getting from that. That that nigga, yeah, he said the same shit. So, you know, and after he said what he said, and then I got back up with him after he said what he said on Drink Champs. Oh, so y'all y'all did connect after Drink Champs? Yeah, and I'm just- In person, phone? In person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he said, you know, he said what he said. I'm not I'm not into Boom. like gossip. He, and said, what he, he said, said what he said. He said and it made me realize that I can't really take I couldn't really take all what he was saying serious. Come on. Yeah. Not, that nigga that said the change. same shit, bro. Very performative. Very performative. And that's the that's how I am. That's like probably one of the reasons why like I feel like that's what I, I'm not. That's what he's good at. And that I'm not so good at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't like doing things that don't feel real or like you know, where, you know, when we were there, it was like, oh yeah, make sure they get a picture of us leaving here so they can, I'm like, what nigga, you saying some wild ass shit about me though? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I hate that sucker shit. I don't like that uh, type shit. I don't like the type of, um, I don't know, like. Just I'm the type of person, way. I value my relationships. Yeah. So if I've ever called you a friend, if I've ever called you family, mm -hmm. I really mean that. Mm -hmm. So if you do something like that to me, mm -hmm. and I would never do that to you, mm -hmm. It's hard for me to ever look at you the same ever. Yeah, and I think he was just pissed because he felt like I chose Drake over him. So that that relates back to like I only spring mm. that up because he brought that up to somebody who told me something. Mm. He said Drake. <laughs> I'm like in 2015, he talking about the song Blessings. 
where I wrote, helped Ye write his verse for the song. Mm -hmm. After he heard the song, was like, I have to be on it. Mm -hmm. And I helped him write his verse. And then I told him, you got to turn it into the mastering plan tomorrow, bro, because my album is about to come out. I wake up the next, by the way, I'm doing way too much as an artist. Like, I shouldn't even have to be worried about shit like this. Right. I'm checking in like an A&R would. Hey, did he send the verse to mastering? Oh, no, he still didn't. I call his engineer. Yo, did he say, oh, no, we still, I'm like, bro, y'all bush, y'all playing. If he, if, if we, he wants to be on the song, he need to send it. And we ended up doing the video version and the radio version, but for some reason he thinks because Drake didn't want him on that song. But I was like, I'm putting Ye on the song anyway because Ye put me on. If he wants to be on the song, he's going to be on the song. Mm -hmm. So even though I've said that to his face, he just don't hear me or some shit. So for some reason, he just think, think that I'm being unloyal or some shit. I really don't know. I can't speak for him. I, in fact, I don't like speaking for other people, but I'm just from my perspective. It was something along those lines with that. Managing rappers' egos is crazy. Yeah, what do you think about all of that? Or, you know. I think that you should have done what was best for you and your album in that moment. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, sometimes when you deal with anxiety and you deal with bouts of depression, because I deal with the same thing, for, we're people pleasers. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to let people down. Right. But then we're the ones that constantly end up getting let down. Like, you got a, I, I, you got a verse that I want to talk about later on okay. that says something like that. But. Yeah. Yeah, and that's true, though, bro. It's like, I be giving a fuck too much about these people that don't give a fuck about, about you. That's they right. don't give a fuck. That's this right. nigga, they don't, none, I mean, I don't know. I can't speak for him, like I said, but it's like. Yeah, I don't know, man. It sound like, and then again, he trying to like, I see, I like how he had to put that in there, though. I helped Rie write his verse, like, you need that credit, you know? But then he'll sit there and say, like, oh, it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna sit there and just put these things out. And this, this is one thing I know, everybody wants their credit at some point. I've even felt like I didn't want my credit. It depends on what it is, the severity of it, and whatever is getting that spotlight, however much contribution I had, if I had a lot of contribution, yeah, if some shit's going, nigga, I'm gonna want my credit, bro. I don't give a fuck. But if, if it's some hat, like, we can't be picky and selective about, like, who we're fucking with or how we're fucking with them or why we're choosing to fuck with them. Like, yo, you gotta just, you know, stand on business and make moves the way you need to make moves, bro. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I be trying to protect people too much. So it's like, mm -hmm. But it's not in my care. But like, who are you trying to, like, grown up, like, yo, I don't give a shit about nobody that doesn't give a shit about me. You feel me? I'm not trying to protect nobody or care for nobody or look out for anybody's feelings. If I know that these people don't care about me, they don't look out for my feelings, and they don't want what's best for me. A lot of people will step on you to grab that ledge and pull themselves up. They will step on your shoulder, grab that ledge, go up. How many of them are gonna try to turn around and reach a hand down to grab you and pull you up? That's the question right there. A motherfucker will use you to get to the next spot, but will they now bring you to that next spot? That's something you have to, nobody owes anybody anything on this planet. No matter what type of business deals you make, no matter how long you've had a friendship, no matter what type of contracts, well, contract different, but at the end of the day, I understand this thoroughly. Nobody owes you anything. I've had long time niggas stop fucking with me, switch up on me. That's fine. There's nothing that says because we were younger and our mentalities matched up and our energies were around the same thing that we could be cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But as everybody gets older, as business gets involved, we grow as humans, we experience things, our mentalities change, that's when you start to like become conscious of the relationships you have. Then you become conscious of who you fuck with and who you call brother and who you, you say, I love you, I love, like, you know, like, I don't, I don't, that motherfuckers throw the word love around, like, like it's jack shit, love you, love, 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 like, yo, nah, bro, it's only select few niggas, all right, bro, love, bro, like, you know the deal, bro, niggas have been in this shit 15, 20 years plus, I got love for them niggas. I don't meet new niggas, and because the niggas signed me a contract, yo, it's love, bro. Like, nigga, nah, we business right now. We didn't grow that love yet. It's still business. And niggas gotta know how to balance the two and keep them separate, you know? And again, it sounds like 
you having love for people that are helping you, but you also have to, you can't mix business and relationships, which is another thing. So it's like, yeah, these niggas is helping me the whole time, but are they helping me because it's helping them? Or are they helping me just because they fuck with me? And that's the difference. The nigga Ye was helping you because it was helping him in return. And I feel like you might have lost sight of that. You know, I don't know the relationship they had or the things Ye said to him. They were all signed to the right label, but I understand businesses. And I know what Ye went through, you know. So, like, that nigga's going to make his decision at the end of the day. And his thoughts are gonna is what got him to where he's at. So, like, for that nigga to say that's the worst decision or whatever, like, I don't think that nigga's wrong for that. He's one of the biggest artists ever. He's not, he, does, he knows what the fuck he's saying. You feel me? So... I don't know. I'm just trying to take it all with a, you know what I mean? Dirt with a grain of salt. Be, shit out be there. cautious of your friendships, man. And be dirty like that. All right, that ain't, that's really not who I am. Mm -hmm. And I say that with pride, you know? I don't, I don't say that like, it's just not, that's not who I am. So Especially if I'm spending all this time doing all this work on myself, and I can look at you and tell that you need to do a lot more work on yourself. So you have grace for that person. Yeah. But that don't mean that you could have continually, continuously allow this person to shit on you. No, nah, period. Yeah. Hey. Oh, hell no. Hi, Samantha Fisher. Niggas got to stop I'm saying fucking artist. period. God damn. Garage today. I need that Hellcat. This giveaway brings together two plum cra That Hellcat is crazy. When you brought up Kendrick, it made me think of a, of a line Kendrick had in, in a record.